Okay. The April work session for the Social Circle Board of Education on April the 10th, 2023 is called to order. The first order of business will be prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. So if you all can stand and repeat the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Amen. Next week. Thank you. We have the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> There is one out front. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. First item on our agenda is the approval of the agenda. Dr. Boer, are there any changes? No, ma'am. Do I have a motion to accept the agenda as presented? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Any discussion? With no further discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed, please say aye. Motion carries announced. Next, we will have the minutes from the March work session and regular board meeting. Do I have a motion to accept those minutes as presented? So moved. Do I have a second? I second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say aye. Motion carried. Minutes from the work session and regular board meeting are approved. Next is the board comments. And I have no board comments tonight. We will keep moving. Next, we will have the superintendent's report. Dr. Boer. Thank you. We'd like to update you on our uh, the current enrollment numbers. Ms. Willis is going to post those up on the board for us. So at this point, as a system, we have 1,928 students. Since last month, the enrollment uh, decreased by five students primary school by two, elementary school increased by two, the middle school decreased by two, and the high school decreased by three. And then next, I wanted to make sure everyone was aware that our first budget work session is this Thursday at 5.30 prior to the regular board meeting. The budget work session will actually be held here at the central office in this room and then dinner will be served downstairs between the two meetings. The second budget session has been rescheduled for Thursday, May 4th. Prior to holding the work sessions, it was scheduled for April 27, but we thought it would make more sense to move it to May 4th on the day that you all would be here anyway, just before our May 4th work session. And again, that May 4th, uh, it will be on May 4th and we'll begin at 5.30 just before our May work session. Next, we wanted to call your attention to what we're proposing uh, will be the April board uh, meeting agenda. And you have this on the top of your packets. So uh, I will be giving a report out regarding assistant principal appreciation, media specialist appreciation, um, and then other comments that uh, may become necessary following this meeting. We will let you know, certainly, if we have anyone who signs up for public participation 24 hours before the meeting is held. Then we'll have time for special recognition, our student recognition that we do monthly. We're going to take time to recognize our a national championship winning wrestler that we have here in the district. That Miss Willis did a great job of making sure that she publicized, but Coach Prater will be there uh, to brag for a few moments about that student. <laughs> 
how we work on making it a few minutes. Uh, and then our, during our special recognition time, we will also recognize our young Georgia authors. So that's a group of students uh, that we recognize annually, and Ms. Robinson here at the district office manages that process, so she'll be the one sharing it with us. During our finance sessions, we will, of course, hear our monthly financial report from Ms. Cross, um, have an update about our Freshway funds, and at this point, we uh, don't have district reports. Um, don't believe that we'll have new business or action items unless that's something that unless that comes up something from here at this meeting and then we will have handle our regular executive session processes with personnel recommendations and then potentially conversation about real estate if that's necessary are there any things that you all would like to suggest that we consider adding to the agenda for the regular April board meeting um, will Jenny Duval be recognized as Walton Youth of the Year? We've been asked to wait until they publish it. Okay. So that they're supposed to do a, um, they're supposed to have their banquet mm -hmm. next Monday. Okay. So, um, but we've we did a big thing here and we have photos to document it. Mm -hmm. But they've had, and respectfully so, we will wait until they have a chance to publish it. Okay. So, but we will for the May. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, and we know we'll have to have extra seating for all of his guests. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. He has a huge fan base. Any other things to consider? Okay. Ms. McKibben, thank you so much for bringing that up, making sure that we're keeping that front and center. All right. So. Next, I want to uh, give you an update regarding school branding. I just want to be able to give you a heads up. Many of you have noticed, oh, Ms. Bell is trying to get um, the door. Yeah. Ms. Cross, would you mind doing that? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> many of you have noticed that quite a few of our athletic teams have been using the color black in their uniforms. And um, we have heard conversation about that from some of our community members. I'm sure some of our community members have mentioned to you that they're not big fans of us doing anything other than red and white. We have had input from many of our parents of our athletes who have that um, white uniforms are really difficult to keep clean. So our, our parents of athletes, including Ms. Cross, which I'll discuss, including Ms. Cross, um, are not fans of the white pants um, for the uniforms, especially with her football player children and, and baseball playing children and her soccer playing girl. So, um, Mr. Armstrong is going to be exploring with the community and surveying the students and um, parents regarding do we consider adding black as one of our student colors, um, as one of our school colors. So, as you know, our, our official colors for a very long time have been red and white, and then at one point, gray was added as an accent color that was used pretty briefly. Um, and I know that as uh, Mr. Armstrong is exploring this with the community, that you all are going to be the first ones to get questions about it. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, we are lucky to have such an involved community with so many passionate opinions. <laughs> so, uh, just wanted to give you a heads up on that one so that you're aware. And then, um, if, if you'd like to have any discussion about that, we certainly can. We also have Ms. Cross here ready to talk about our audit. We are really pleased with our audit results for the year. So, there are three attachments here. Um, the first attachment. You, you want the audit yes. itself? Okay, that is the audit itself. Right. So, it is a <coughs> document. You are free to read it. Um, I will point out that. In the very first section, it begins section I, there's a management discussion and analysis. That probably is the portion I would recommend if you want to read, you read, because all of the remaining portion is financial statements, that kind of thing. That could be hard to decipher, but that first part is actually something that at the time Dr. Hooker and I, we write, and it kind of gives an explanation of our financials. This will be posted on our website for the public um, after the Thursday meeting. And the audit did receive an unmodified opinion, which is the highest um, opinion that you can get, meaning that the financial statements are presented fairly. 
also included here for your view is that, yes, that's the transmittal letter. Um, I don't know if these have always been shared with you, but it's suggested that we always share with management and the board these. Um, we receive over 750000 in federal money, so we have to have what's called a single audit. And basically, it's just an additional audit of our federal expenditures to certify to the government that we are, um, there's no material issues with this. So that is what this is. That's a single audit letter. And then the other letter that you have attached there is what's called the management letter. And what this does is this just kind of gives a brief overview of anything that doesn't need to appear in the financials, but that they want to just bring to our attention. This is something that was um, reviewed with Mr. Callahan and Dr. Brewer during our, um, the exit interview with our auditors. And Which is an annual responsibility, the exit interview. Yes, the exit interview is an annual. And this is the piece, I think, that often gets shared with management, but not with you as the board. It's not shared with um, anyone else. It's just a management kind of letter. Um, and, you know, I won't go through all of it because it's, you know, fairly long. All it's saying is that all of the estimates used, um, any disclosures, they found free of errors. Um, there are no significant difficulties in dealing with any of our management. Um, there are, on the last three pages, what they consider um, immaterial or um, there, there's no findings. So this is the big page. The findings is what gets reported to the state. So this is the page you want clear. Um, so they had no findings there. Um, the next two pages are disclosure adjustments. So they just find things that they may want to change a little bit on our statements. I actually write our financial statements. So ha doing that once a year, they will find a few things that I find a little, you know, I do a little different. Um, previously, we had an outside CPA firm doing that, um, but I thought I'll do that myself to save $8,000. Um, and so, yeah, you will find a few things that, you know, they'll correct and just have for, it's really for um, <coughs> presenting purposes of our statements. So that's what these are um, on this page and the last page. And the last page is actually just, um, they're so immaterial, we don't make any adjustments for them. But I wanted to present this to you so that you would have all the information. Without reading through all that, are we past the point where the federal government's checking on us to make sure we spent all the free money that we got? I know I, I had to the pay some money. of it, so it wasn't free. But have we passed that point in the calendar where I know there are some agencies out there that are in trouble because they did or haven't spent? Yes. Um, right so now, there are. Um, you know, we got three big pieces of mm -hmm. grants. Um, we've expended the first two in full, um, and those are part of our audit. The last one that doesn't um, we, is open until September of 24. I'm not saying that correctly, 24, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we have another year. Um, they do, <coughs> because of the large amount of that, um, those funds, that was included as part of our single audit this year, so they did some additional testing. Um, the federal government doesn't necessarily, we have to do a reporting to them quarterly, um, but they haven't really presented any issues with no one spending the funds. We've, pretty much everyone is spending the funds. It's your larger districts that receive so much more than we got that are trying to find ways to spend the funds. Um, but no, we did not have that problem. Okay, thank you. And so, Ms. Austin, that last dra drawdown that we did mm -hmm. for CARES 2, I believe we were over 40% um, spent for the one point. CARES 3. CARES 3, yeah, the last one. Yes, we are. The CARES 3. So that was the larger part pot where it was one, over $1.6 million. And we're using those funds primarily to cover uh, substitutes for professional learning opportunities. We're also using that for all of our after-school tutoring. We're uh, providing an opportunity to offer some real extensive after-school tutoring at all of our academic levels. And then we're also using that, the largest part is paying for our summer school expenses. Um, and during our summer school experiences, students are given the opportunity to provide transportation, and we also uh, feed the students during that. And so it's a, it's a large expense, and we appreciate the opportunity to be able to, to offer that through the CARES funds. 
Has there been some discussion for these budget meetings that are coming about how we're going to replace those funds? Yes, we are constantly mm -hmm. having that issue. Um, you knowing that, services? Um, you know, primarily, like Dr. Brewer said, tutoring and summer school is our biggest mm -hmm. use of the ESSER mm -hmm. funds. And it's not something we really offered before COVID. Mm -hmm. So it will be an issue of being able to provide those services after, um, especially at your middle high school levels, probably. Um, so it's included in the budget discussions for week one. Yes. We are thinking it through. And, and the funding has been helpful to us mm -hmm. as a district of Aspen. Any other so, with our new business and our action items, um, we have had several opportunities as a group to discuss the portrait of a graduate and had an opportunity at the last board meeting again to do a public presentation of that. And so it is my recommendation at this point that we, um, as a board, officially adopt our portrait of a graduate. Is that something we would move and vote on now or we need to wait for Thursday? It's something that we could actually vote on now or if you prefer for that to be in a meeting where there are more families, we can certainly do it on Thursday. I'm going to do it either way. Do you have a problem? Mr. Chairman. You're, you're okay with today? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll second. I have a motion. I got to read my paper. <laughs> we have an action item to adopt the portrait of a graduate. Do I have a motion to adopt the portrait of a graduate as presented? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed, please say aye. Motion carried. B. Let's say whoever, I know there's a bunch of folks, but a lot of work went into putting that together. Right? And a lot of time. I know it's two years. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have an action item for a field trip request for the Social Circle High School football team to go to the FFA camp for their annual camp. Do I have a motion to accept the superintendent's recommendation for this field trip request for our football team? July the 30th through August the 1st. Do I have a, oh, do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Do I have a motion to exit the regular session and enter executive session to discuss personnel and real estate? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed, please say aye. The motion carries. Do I have a motion to exit the executive session and re-enter the regular session? So moved. Do I have a second? I second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed by saying aye. Motion carries. We have personnel recommendation from our superintendent. We will take them all in one slate. For the certified staff. Do I read it? Mm -hmm. So I gotta read it. I'll, I'll read it. Okay. That's presented. Denise Oglesby, Candace Snowden, Priscilla Waters and William Wells for continued employment for the 23-24 school year. And for uh, new folks joining the districts would be Allison Clark, Lindsay Cottingham, Michelle Elrod, Laura Meyer, Jeremy Mulkey, Melinda Murdaugh, Leslie Perry Rivers. And then we have several resignations. Ms. Willis, would you mind scanning down just a little bit for resignations? Those are Ms. Geneva Bibbs Bug, who's a counselor at the elementary and primary school. Christina Justice Harris, also a counselor at the high school. Cheryl McFall, a teacher at the middle school. Andrea Parker, a teacher at the middle school. Jamie Pledger, a special education teacher at the high school. And then we also uh, have their requested retirement for Jennifer Foster, Forster, a teacher at the elementary school. Thank you. Do I have a motion to accept these recommendations from our superintendent? So moved. Do I have a second? 
Start again. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye, aye. Anyone opposed, say aye. Motion carries. Okay. For the classified staff. For our classified staff, we would like to recommend continued employment for Sabrina Shamadine, a bookkeeper at our middle school. And then for other classified recommendations, we would like to recommend the hire of Randall Wayne Floyd, a facilities maintenance technician. Uh, that would be for this school year. And then Morgan Greer, a media clerk paraprofessional for the middle and high school. She's currently a substitute with us, and that would be for the next school year. Thank you. Do I have a motion to accept these recommendations from our superintendent? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed, please say aye. Motion carried. The substitute teachers. Our substitute teachers are Denise Davenport, Betsy Carter, Chastity Reed, and Todd Damiani. Do I have a motion to accept these recommendations from our superintendent? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, please say aye. Motion carried. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed, please say aye. Motion carries. Meeting is adjourned.